Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Larry. I mean, I'm me. <laughs> you're me. <laughs> Did I mess it up already? No, no, you're good. There is no mess ups on our show because I only edit a little bit. <laughs> we did. It's we like did a, a, yeah, it's like a one a take. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. We Thanks did for having show. me on. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we, <laughs> Ross, where do you want to go? Um, we could go anywhere. I think we start with something that's at the bottom of the notes and being that we're a Toyota podcast, I want to know everything and everything about Larry's FJ. Mm. We're, mm. we're only a partial Toyota podcast. Like we're not sponsored. Right. But you guys post, mostly focus on Toyota stuff, right? Just because I yes. can't afford Land Rovers mm-hmm. and, the, uh, and mean, the maintenance. And like I'm not Scotto with the, a Cummins yeah. hookup. <laughs> even i mean that's the thing is even land rover enthusiasts know that uh they're more expensive and they are also capable but you just have to be wary of things going wrong with them you know and i think mm-hmm. um you, you know uh ron car one of the other guys at hone again um a really good friend of mine he has a really nice uh, manual disco and so cool. any anytime we talk about it you know it's like uh, yep, she's still going strong. You know, not many mm-hmm. things have broken. You know, instead of like the the I guess the um, conversation you have with another another Toyota enthusiast is not so much like oh what's broken whatever. It's like what what are you going to do to it next <laughs> to, right. to improve it? Um, it's but, modifications, uh, not maintenance. <laughs> yeah, I I like them. I like uh, Land Rovers. I just man. They are rough. It is super rough. Um, my is wife Ron's? drives one. Yeah. <laughs> my, my wife drives one daily and it is. Oh, boy. oh my God. I, I've replaced so much stuff on that thing and it does not go off road. <laughs> not willingly out of, out of necessity, right? <laughs> yeah. Out of necessity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my, uh, my FJ is coming along. There's still a couple things I need to do to it. I think to really get it to the level where I want it, but I'm mm-hmm. actually excited. I'm building another uh, truck that I haven't announced yet, which I'm actually mentioning it for the first time on this podcast with you guys. I'm I'm building a Tundra. Oh, that's amazing! Which, yeah, which should be pretty cool because um, it's it's uh, I still say that I'm kind of new to the off road world. I mean, mm. when I say new, it's like, I guess I'm in, I'm in about eight years or so, but I mean, mm. compared to everything else I've been shooting, I'm still new to off-road, right? But with that said, um, I, I'm really getting into it. I'm, I'm getting everybody that I'm working with really into it too. So our team is growing, you know, we like to chase off-road racing and we like to shoot off-road a lot. Mm. So we need just more production vehicles. I My daily driver is an LC200 Land Cruiser, mm-hmm. and we yeah. actually u- used that for King of the Hammers this year as a secondary chase vehicle. <laughs> and oh, then wow. I I crashed it really bad into, in the whoops. I was just, oh, no. you know, going faster than speed. I need to be going. And uh, I crashed into the whoops. Um, we, I nosed it in, so like I destroyed the radiator. Oh, no. oh. I destroyed a bunch of stuff, which really sucked. It's, it's all repaired now. It looks brand new. But um, already at that time, I was thinking to myself, like, I need to build another off-road chase vehicle because I can't beat up my daily driver like that. You know, Something you care about a little less. Yeah. And then plus, um, have you guys been to King of Hammers? I haven't been yet. Sore subject because we haven't. <laughs> we we yeah. both had Utah trips scheduled last year that got blown up. Like we've had all of these opportunities and they just evaporate. Yeah, King of the Hammers yeah, is hopefully I, this or next year. Well, they, next they're year. Pretty, it, I mean, the the event in itself is really rough on vehicles, if you can imagine. After one trip there, after being in the desert for 10 days, this year we were in the desert for 13 days. I have to do so much. You have to do so much maintenance to the vehicles Mm -hmm. to just get them back. You know, the uh, in-cabin filter and also the air filters 
are just completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. Just completely. I mean, this year wasn't as bad as years before because of how much rain we had. But generally speaking, it's just horrible. And everybody gets like hammer lungs, which is just breathing in the dust. Dust, dust. Yeah. The the people um, doing bonfires. It just it's just really bad. Mm -hmm. And everybody stays on the lake, but it's uh, between basically one year out of the whole one week out of the whole year it's the biggest city in between los angeles and uh las vegas i believe oh wow it's like a wow. hundred thousand people or some something crazy um but with that said with that many people it's just they're just churning up the dust and you can see the dust cloud from miles and miles mm -hmm. away um but anyways they're, they're really hard on the vehicles and because I took my daily driver there, I seriously, I just destroyed it. I mean, we had to get a towed back. It was pretty sad. But with that said, it, it's forced me to build this new vehicle, which is a Tundra. I've always wanted to build a Tundra. And of course, I get one as soon as the new one is. seems like it's going to be around the corner. Right. Um, <laughs> which is fine, you know? That's which is the model year because, to get. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, They've yeah, worked out yeah. all the bugs. Exactly. That's what I think. And that's kind of the cool thing about Toyota. You know, you see the longevity of the vehicles that they have and they just have them out for so long for, for one generation. And the reason why is because, you know, there's no frills. It may not have the bells and whistles. In fact, it doesn't. But the point is that it's supposed to work and it's supposed to get you to a million miles and that's it. Yep. Who cares? You know, after the fact, we can add our own things for example, like with the FJ, and that motor is is just bulletproof, but it is so slow. My oh, goodness, bad. is it I, slow? I, I've had two vehicles with the four liter. It's it's not Horrible. fast. Yeah, it's not fast. But, but what you know, once you put a supercharger on it, it wakes it up, mm -hmm. and it's reliable. It doesn't get the best uh, fuel mileage. It's probably even worse now. I know it's worse. But that's <laughs> and you're probably not, point, not you know? easier on it. No, no, not at all. But um, I have 70,000 miles on my FJ right now, okay. which is pretty low, right? Mm -hmm. But I bought it with 20, 25,000 from a dealership, from a Ford dealership, actually. And since then, I've only driven it to and back off-road events, hmm. just for off-road. So... If, if uh, it's a weekend where, let's say, we go to Moab, okay, so I drive to Moab, off-road there, then come back. Or if we need to do something in Baja, I drive there, off-road all the way in Baja, all the way down to uh, La Paz or wherever, then come back, and then I leave it. I don't actually use it for any other duty than off-road, so that's some hard, about mm -hmm. 50,000 miles of hard driving. Yeah, that's abuse. That that's abuse. Yeah. So is the that, Tundra going to be built in the, with the same purpose in mind or is it uh, going to be a... My, yeah, my, I think my um, goal with it, I know it's been done to death and I know a lot of people have done this sort of build, but I wanted to build it and I wanted to kind of show how accessible it is. I wanted to build a, a Raptor Tundra, you know, a, a <laughs> yeah, lot of people travel. have done yep. that. Yes, but... Um, the difference with mine is it's going to be a long bed, right? So okay. I've seen oh, wow. a lot of a lot builds. Of truck. Well, I mean, it, I, I've seen a lot of the builds where it's the five and a half foot bed mm -hmm. and then they do everything. You know, they do the fiberglass over fenders. They do all of that stuff. Um, what we, what I want to do is that, but it's the, uh, the crew cab, you know, not the crew max. Okay. And I want to do the, the over fenders. Uh, it's not over fenders, but it's the actual wide fenders. Yeah, yeah. Know? The huge it's, fiberglass fenders that give yeah, you like yeah, yeah. six inches extra. Yeah, yeah. It's four inches. Um, it's it's a four four inch fender, but it. I want to do thirty sevens. I want to just do it where <laughs> it looks like Toyota may have brought it out from the factory like that. Okay. Yeah. So not not so like, like OEM that. plus. So so um yeah, you know just, who those like who have a really. Fenders. Those don't look so good, but mm -mm. for example, <laughs> McNeil makes um, a version where it looks like the Raptor design, 
where it it's integrated like the headlight area everything really? is integrated and it just looks oem if you go on their website right now um they they make some and avd make some too which i'm actually talking to those guys right now so well, uh, you can that should be fun yeah is it more of a bold style on you said on the long um, bit, right Ooh. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. <laughs> I got it. Pull it, pull it up. Tra- those look so good. Oh, man. It's but, not But AVD, AVD fiberglass makes a really good one, too, where it, it is. Them, yeah. It just looks like the Raptor. When you look at a Raptor, what's the major difference? It is the fenders. The width. You know, the, yeah. fe- the width of it, yep. it just has that. So they have a finished one. If you look at the McNeil ones, mm-hmm. they have they have a finished one. If you go to the another one of their um, tabs I are think they you local go to you are you just yeah, gonna drive there me. okay i was gonna say shipping yeah. those would see, not see, be look the, at the uh, gray one look at the gray one. The gray look one. the first one yeah is that cement? look how good that, oh, that was great you wouldn't <laughs> even know that's not aftermarket does that look oem or what like if it came from the factory like that do you know how many toyota would sell like that oh my god all of them look at it <laughs> yeah <Orange. laughs> but but if you look at the other slide of their pictures Look, if you look at the, um, look at how it's integrated and look how it smooth blends that really looks. well. Yeah, it maintains looks, like the body line and everything. 100% looks better than the stupid riveted on um, yeah. over fenders. Granted, this is a lot more expensive and it's a lot more body work involved mm-hmm. in making this look right. But look, it has the stock TRD Pro um, bumper. Yeah. And look how oh, well really? it goes with that. Yeah, look at it. And also look huh. at the rear uh, bedside. It looks stock. It you know? does. And, and but, just... but of course you have to cut off the skin from the original one. Um, and then you have to take it to a body shop mm-hmm. and they have to line it up and everything. That's why it's a lot more involved. It may not be that expensive to get these uh actual fenders, but you know, once you take it to the body shop and you work with them, it'll take quite a bit of time to make it look right. like that. But you know what? Honestly, I think that's worth it. And in my eyes, I just wanted to create something like um, if it were to be the Toyota uh, Tundra um, TRD Pro X, <laughs> it would be something like that, you okay. know, because yep. like they had they had something like the X Trail before, right? They had there was a, a Tundra called Rock Warrior, but I think mm. they also had something similar with like a Baja. I know there was a Tacoma Baja, Baja X, X Baja, something like that. Mm which was surprise the package like a, a isn't package. there the the but, tss off road i have no idea i think it's an sr5 trim package hmm. which sr5 um, is already a trim package <laughs> literally yeah, yeah but know, w- so. with that that and i got a 2018 so that with the supercharger with the magnus and supercharger forget about it i mean that's, That's gonna really be good. just insane. Oh, you're gonna supercharge it too? Oh boy. Yeah, so it'll be supercharged. I got King Shocks. Um, I'm gonna go with Camberg Arms. Um, I've talked to everybody already. I'm just starting to gather parts for it. And then this is gonna be a six part build series with my friends from um, Copart. I actually bought the car off of Copart or really? the truck. Really? Yeah, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. So Copart actually reached out to me and they wanted to show how accessible it is to use their website to build Mm -hmm. a simple project like this. You know, when you think of Copart, have you guys dealt with Copart before? Indirectly. I have browsed the websites a number of times because it seems like everything is so accessible. Right. So that's the thing is a lot of times when it comes to Copart cars, when you think about these projects, you think, oh, the entire back half got chopped off mm. and I'm just going to take the motor out and then build it or put it in something else. Right. Or, <laughs> Hey, this, this got in a rollover or this was flood damage, or this was, you know, completely submerged underwater. Now I have to take the motor out and build it. <laughs> what people don't realize is Copart actually sells essentially used cars. Mm-hmm. The one that I got was in a collision, but it was fixed. And then I'm just, using the website to buy something that needs work but it's not that bad a lot of them i admit if you get something from copart it's fire damage or vandalism or in fact there was this one legit 
I uh, was browsing, you know, before we got into this uh, project and I found a Tundra that legit, I think somebody got shot in what? Oh, boy. because there was a bunch of bullet hose, holes in the windows and in the door. And then so... on the side of it, it had a biohazard sign. <laughs> so, okay. So then, <laughs> wait, and, and on top of that, get this a big, big pool of blood on the no. seat no, 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 and, no, 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 no. and on the carpet. And then I turned to my assistant um, who was working back here and I was like, Hey, check it out. This, this truck looks good. It's a good price. Slow miles, everything, <laughs> Chuck's good. but it, it, it uh. looks like somebody got murdered in it. And he's like, no, that I'm out. And I'm like, but it's a 1794 but edition. He's like, oh, what? Oh, <laughs> it's 1794? So, I'm like, yeah, look at it. It's so good. They and have then, to disclose in a car if somebody died in it the same way if somebody died in a house when you're looking to buy a house. Uh, yeah, but what if they got <laughs> shot and then they survived the shooting and they died later? <laughs> good point. That's, well, anyways, fair point. I didn't end up getting that one even though I wanted to, I didn't end up getting that one. I ended up getting one that was definitely less damage. So uh, we got the truck and I'm starting to like, you know, take it apart and mm -hmm. we're, we're going to get it going. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I got the Pearl red, which I'm really excited Ooh, nice. about. I, I like red cars and trucks. So did you yeah, know you were going to go Tundra before they approached you for your next build or did they, the timing of them approaching you just lead you to the Tundra? You, you know, there was a, two ways I could have gone, I think, with this sort of project. Um, I definitely want to build a drift car really, really, yeah, pretty much that, but I got the uh, got crew cab bit. version. Not, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, the thing is, um, th there was two ways I could have gone. I could have gone potentially with my first ever drift car. You know, I've been shooting drifting for so many years. I've never actually had a purpose-built drift car. I have a lot of cars for time attack purpose or just messing around or street cruisers, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's exactly my truck right there. That, that. So anyways, um, I, I could have done a drift car, but I was thinking, you know, with the whole LC 200 issue and off-road racing coming back in a big way this year, I knew we needed another off-road chase vehicle. And mm -hmm. for years and years I've borrowed, you know, Casey Curry's trucks. I've borrowed, Toyota actually let me borrow his trucks and I beat them up and I feel bad about it. But I mean, I, I try, to, <laughs> try to do them justice. You know, I try to write about them and shoot videos and tell, tell people about the trucks, but it's just not for me to really beat up. You know, so with that said, I wanted to build my own and I've always liked the Tundra. You know, the Tacoma is a great truck, but mm -hmm. the problem is it's just not for the duty that we need it for. You know, we need it to be V8. We need it to be a lot of power. Because essentially what people don't realize is we're running our own race mm -hmm. against these yeah. people, especially when we're in Baja, there are the highway sections, you know, but there's plenty of sections in Baja, California, that's just not paved at all. And you actually have to just race your race against these people. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to cut them off. Um, you have to take shortcuts to, to beat them to the next location. Right. And that's the only way you can properly mm. cover it. These companies, um, these manufacturers and these big tire brands and the people that we work with, Monster Energy, Ford, um, the past couple of years we've been working with Ford uh, for their Bronco program, um, just uh, Yokama Tire, just all of these people, King Shocks, all these people that we work with, they expect these pictures. They want mm -hmm. content. And the appetite for content is bigger than ever. So they expect us to be able to capture capture their guys in action. So like these shots that you're browsing through right now, we shot these at King of the Hammers uh, for the release of the Bronco race, race uh, 4,400 trucks. And this is the reason why we're on the lake bed for 13 days straight. It's because um, we couldn't show like any no one could see these vehicles you know these were code red they were before uh, a lot of people went onto the lake bed so we we did this set and then it allowed us to have enough time to deliver them to ford for the big release of mm -hmm. of the bronco race trucks but yeah okay. so so yeah nothing against the tacoma sakura any other vehicles but i just think um the the tundra 
if we build it out, it's going to be a proper chase vehicle. The, yeah. the, the thing I picked up less, like obviously being in, in Colorado in the blowing snow, something I don't normally realize because I'm in Kansas City where there's pickup trucks everywhere. But when I saw a truck in Colorado, if it wasn't the ubiquitous forerunner, that's like literally that and every Subaru is the state car, right? It was a tundra, yeah. like to the point where I was like, man, there are tundras everywhere in Colorado, mm-hmm. at least. I think I, yeah. I like them a lot. I had one forever ago. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, and, and the, the Tacoma, I was just talking to my wife about it today. Um, the Tacoma, surprisingly, there's just a certain, um, I guess, demographic that likes those trucks. Uh, for example, I think it's the most popular vehicle in hawaii it's mm-hmm. just like that surfer like hey let's yeah, go to the beach sure. or whatever and it, it's just like the young person's utility vehicle you know but for for what we need it for in terms of camera equipment and in terms of just going really really fast in the mm-hmm. desert it's just yeah right like i've been on the trail with a couple supercharged tacomas and i mean given the trails here you probably couldn't fit a tundra on the trails not happily at least i know right some of the parks tell you straight up if you have a raptor you're not fitting um, yeah. but even a supercharged t-rex yeah oh god oh geez. it's even wider <laughs> not a chance in hell um but a supercharged tacoma as stout as it can be and as healthy as it can be is still substantially more taxed than the v8 in the tundra and when you're just running long miles, and I, I give it, haven't been there, haven't done it, but in Baja, like you probably don't want to worry about anything except your destination and the thing that you're aiming to do. So, yeah. and also the seating position in the Tacoma is fucking terrible. <laughs> I say that lovingly, but it's horrible. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know. I, I've driven them quite a. Um, I've driv- driven them uh, just from Toyota. Like they let me use the. Uh, I guess it's the last of the fourth gen ones. Like it was like the lava orange one and it was supercharged from the factory. And that was amazing. We actually used it to chase the Mint 400. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's just the space thing, you know, the in inside of the cab itself, we need a lot of space for camera equipment, you know, and in, in back, you know, we need the extra fuel. There's just places in Baja California where you just cannot fill up. Uh, the, like the last gas station it's not like in the u.s where there's a gas station every 50 miles it's not like that uh and also on top of that um i don't know just just having that ground clearance you know not getting stuck in, mm-hmm. in um in the stilt all of that do you remember when toyota released the second gen tundra and they built that trd supercharged one it was like a regular cab short bed two-wheel drive and it was running like five zero to sixty really yeah it was crazy is it is that the x trail or no 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 hold on i'll find i'll find something is is, it but that's the 3.4 liter right no this was the 5.7 this was in like 2007 or 2008 5.7 oh Oh, oh, the tundra yeah the tundra the tundra oh uh, They, they had one that was from the factory with the with the supercharger right i remember you could buy okay hold on uh, how do I, I don't even remember. I know they had the supercharger because my uncle had it and was hilarious. I was like, "This is a Tundra. What do you do?" Yeah, supercharger it's so for? it's it's so fast. It, he um, would just roll them all the time. Roll so like the tires. <laughs> roll them <laughs> puts a different mind, a different image in my mind. Um, okay, so it was 2008. Motor Trend had an article about a TRD supercharged tundra and mm-hmm. it did zero to 60 in 4.4 sorry <laughs> what <laughs> that's crazy so that that's funny so that is down like that is really close to my house that's Irwindale speedway is it oh, but really? that's cool yeah <laughs> that's cool that they t- did it there that's cool that they tested it there i'm sure oh i can't imagine that's very good to do back to back to back launches on that thing. probably doesn't probably probably not <laughs> Yeah, on a prep surface. Oh man, I actually um, saw a set of those twenty twos that are on that truck for sale local to me recently, and the guy was asking like five thousand dollars. Get out of here! 
yeah that, that's essentially like the lightning but the toyota version exactly which is uh, i don't see a problem it's pretty cool we should build another yeah. one that so was, anyways, yeah short short cab long beds are something that people hunt for with tundras like it's it's the rarity <laughs> yeah Good off road. Hmm. so are you guys building anything right now i'm slowly working on the sequoia <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you I, know I, I saw a sequoia recently that kind of blew my mind it was uh one that had a the the 2014 and up tundra front end grafted to grafted it on yeah. the front yeah. <laughs> it looks so right oh that looks so cool and it's just amazing to me that uh i, I feel like toyota should have just done that they should have just come out with one like just that left the, the second same. gen the tacoma front end fits on the forerunner the, the like oh really all right oh nine forerunner too oh I didn't know which that. i'm sure is an inexpensive thing to do <laughs> no chance but I actually own Chris's old V8 05 Forerunner and just finished up the suspension. That oh, looks cool. amazing. I mean, those yeah. wheels need to be burned at the stake, but I, yeah. I, oh, geez. I'm, I'm happier with mine. <laughs> yeah. I got Tundra yeah. wheels. So, yeah, so oh, yeah. part that of the way good. there. That looks good. But yeah, it looks amazing minus the wheels. If it just had 17 inch like, one? small yeah. wheels. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. good. Yeah, no, and good. that's basically what the new TRD Pro Sequoia looks like. The mm. same big Toyota, you know, grill. Mm. Yeah, mm. but not quite the same. The it's same. Not, it's not They're the full. The same thing. It's not the full bar, and it's got the FJ style roof rack, which is. Mm. I don't. I just like the new roof rack on them. Um, oh, oh, okay. I just. It seems mm. ag- like oddly aggressive. Hmm. but FJ I, I did look up i can swap those headlights or not these but like what what do you guys think about the bronco um i'm cautiously optimistic <laughs> um, i i just i hope this the, the bronco pushes all of these other manufacturers to kind of step it up in that in that realm you know i think toyota owned it for so long with the forerunner that uh um I mean, I know it's not exactly the same thing, um, but yeah, with the FJ and the Forerunner, they need to come they back. Definitely have Jeep on their toes. There's no yeah. question about that. Between you know the electric, the 4XE, and the 392, maybe they were in the pipeline, but I, I think the Bronco has spurred them to kind of get going on things faster than they otherwise would have. And Toyota just patented a you know something called Trail Hunter. So mm-hmm. skeptical of it being anything more than just like a, a TRD Pro X or something, but I don't know. there were swirlings for a while. They were going to build a new FJ. Yeah, yeah. Now's the time. Mm-hmm. Well, that's now is the time. When I when I put in Trail Hunter, the first thing that comes up is a new FJ styled looking thing. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I love the Photoshop on that. The Photoshop <laughs> is such a bad. Not- Great. Oh, I'm copy drag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so bad. But if they did like oh. a vintage roof off thing, like a like an FJ40 clone, like mm. basically mm. Toyota has for years had the blueprint. Like Icon has shown them what to do and sold them for I'm what two hundred. I can't get over that picture. 000. The picture's bad. Mine. Oh, it's so big, funny. Big power, no roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds so like Toyota. <laughs> big power. Oh. <laughs> all right. All right. So I, I want to talk about uh, we, we can shit on Toyota and love Toyota all we want, but there's a lot of other stuff going on in the off road world. And, and you seem to be very much on the forefront of it. So mm-hmm. off road racing has really come into its own over the last few years, it seems. What are you seeing? Is you think it's going to continue to spike in popularity or was there just like a massive uprising and everything, or, you know, is it just a people finally realizing the accessibility of off-road and that you can kind of drive in a way you can't on the street. Uh, I know King of the Hammers in of itself is like the epitome of that. Um, Yeah. I think a lot of it is like our generation, you know, when you grow up, um, modifying cars, whether you're into muscle cars or if you're into import cars, if you're into drag racing, drifting, whatever, 
generally speaking, all of that stuff is frowned upon, especially if you're driving on the street. You know, you、mm-hmm. can get in trouble very quickly、uh, if you're driving aggressively on the street, or if you just change the exhaust on something. You know, on your Nissan or 350Z or、mm-hmm. or、um, whatever. But when you lift a truck, and if you build one properly for overland use or for off-road use, nobody bats an eye. You know, nobody looks at you at all. You blend in.、Mm-hmm. In fact, you're slower. Everything you do to an off-road vehicle makes it slower and slower and slower to、yeah. the point where you、Dynamically、can barely、worse. move at all. Yeah, exactly.、Uh, way worse with like tents and this and that and whatever. The center of gravity is so high.、Um, But in a way, it's just so much fun to do that. You know, it's like just grown up modifier, modifying and tinkering. It's just the grown up version of that. And plus, people of our generation, you know, now we, that we have kids, we want, we want to go camping. We want to、uh, include them in our activity, and it's like that. That's just the way to do it. You know, my kids love going camping. My kids love、um, sitting in the FJ, and and you know, just. Whatever it's it's just a lot different compared to slow and low or or loud and、right. fast. It's um、There's... it's more like high high and slow. <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. High and slow.、Yeah. No, but there is a that's a good point because there's a different inclusiveness in the adventure part of it versus just going to a racetrack. If you know if you're going for your own personal track day, taking your kids or significant other is like. What are they going to do? Sit there, stare, watch, but you at least get a different view of things and see different sights and get to experience things differently. If you're just, you know, in the woods somewhere. Yeah, and now more than ever, you know, there's just fewer and fewer things to do,、um, especially just recently. You know, just the past year, so many people are going camping. So many people are enjoying off-road, especially on the west coast. We just have so much. Open public land that just you、Don't、just take、it. a road and it just goes nowhere, you know.、Um, mm. Yeah, the point is that you guys have to travel, but that's the fun part of it. That's half of the fun, you know, just、mm-hmm. getting to these places.、Um, but yeah, it's it's <laughs> the thing is also like you go to the flattest state in the union. You go to Florida, and the, like the highest hill is what three hundred feet. Something、But、like、they have the craziest built jeeps,、oh, the、yeah. craziest <laughs> built pickup trucks to essentially drive straight up Mount Everest. You know, like these、right. things you can stand underneath, and that's that's the fun part of it. Is is I guess、oh, even、modern. if you're not using it, yeah, if if you're not using it for its intended purpose, you can still build these awesome vehicles. Dude, it legitimately is three hundred and forty-five feet above sea level. Yes. <laughs> also, that's ridiculous. Well,、yeah. my my dad's always joked that Florida is the one state where you can park your car in the middle, stand on the hood, and see both coasts. Like, <laughs> which clearly the rotation of the Earth doesn't allow that. But <laughs> yeah, it's three hundred forty-five feet. <laughs> it's called、um, but Britain yeah, Hill, it, 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 <laughs> and it's a hill. It's definitely a hill. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a slight hill. Oh god,、you、just it, it is so far up the Panhandle. You're almost in.、Uh, <laughs> Mississippi. Oh wow! Wait, no, Alabama. Woo! State, but、tomorrow. um, same thing. Yeah, it, it is getting bigger, and also on top of that,、uh, there was really no way to enjoy off-road racing from your couch before.、Mm-hmm. Now, with live streaming, the live streaming is so good. You know, satellite internet, and also all of the drivers pushing to kind of show how cool this. Sport actually is like Casey Curry, BJ Baldwin,、um, Bryce Menzies. All those guys have such a social presence, and you can actually follow along, even if there's no no like official way to follow along.、Mm-hmm. For example, when Casey、uh, went to Dakar to to drive、uh, and and to win in UTV class. There was no way to you know really follow along, but I would follow his personal social media and just their team social media, and it allowed us to to see what's actually going on and you know the hardships that they're having, and、mm-hmm. it, it's just so cool. No, there's no time before where you would be able to do that. 
you know, before right. it's like, how would you even know who would win the Baja 1000 until it's after the fact? Exactly. As a, as a kid, it yeah. was like in, you know, four wheeler magazine the following month. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But now it's just, everything is so updated. Um, when such and such, you know, breaks at this mile or whatever, it, it's all live, all the live tracking. Right. It's really the coolest thing, even on Google maps, when you're down in Mexico and then during the actual race, when you go to Google maps, it shows you the race course. It actually shows you the active race course. Yes. It's is a safety from, thing, honestly. Is it from oh, score just or is it off? from like... No, it's from Google. It's so like you don't accidentally part. drive onto the, onto the course? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it could be super dangerous, you know, if you drive onto course at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's, it's like there. And then that way, when you map something, it tries to avoid it, except for official crossings. Hmm. Okay. It's the craziest thing. I, it's just so useful. Wasn't um, there a but, really bad accident within the last five years where somebody like a, a, they weren't even spectators. They were just like just a group of people in a van or something accidentally ended up on the course. Yeah. There's a bad accident every year. <laughs> it's yeah, pretty fair. crazy. That's fair. Yeah. There's just not very many countries that would allow that kind of racing. And it's crazy that it still exists. And I'm okay with that, you know, and, I think everybody, including the officials, try as hard as possible to make it as safe as possible. But it's just there's just things that happen, you know. It is racing and it is very, very dangerous. What what you guys I don't know if you guys know this, and this blows my mind every single time. And I actually had a conversation with um with uh, uh um, Jerry Zayden from Camberg Racing mm -hmm. about this recently. And uh he this it's still this way if you want to drive in a trophy truck this year for the Baja 1000 you can chris or to, ross i just have to show up with you, the truck right yeah you just have to show up with the truck you don't need any licensing you don't even need to have a driver's license i don't think because there are those younger competitors that don't even have driver driver's license but you don't need to be credentialed or it's not like no racing in the states where you have like to have formula ford or whatever no, yeah to... yeah no wow no you just show up and if you have enough money to buy a trophy truck if you if you spend whatever three hundred thousand, half a million dollars on the craziest trophy truck you can legitimately just show up they tech you for safety you know they make sure your helmet's good fire suit whatever all of that oh they my check god they inspect you know the roll cage everything's good you're good. You're at the start line. Green flag drops. You go legitimately. So, I like that. <laughs> is it kind of the same at Pikes Peak, or is there more to get no, into Pikes, Pikes Peak? Pikes Peak is so it's such an exclusive uh, group of. It's such an exclusive race. You they they have to vet you. They okay. have to make sure uh, you're not going to drive off the side of the mountain. Well, because so I, I, I watched to. <laughs> the Pikes Peak special that you guys did, and it mm -hmm. felt like the one guy was kind of a. I bought a car and I showed up. You mean? Who was oh, that? oh yeah, yeah, the Tesla guy, right? No, he's no, no, he's no. been racing. Oh, the two forty Z. The the Mazda, was it a Mazda three hatchback? What, what was that guy? It's, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But so he's done Time Attack before, and oh, he's has done. He? Okay. Com he's done competitions and. Essentially, they tell you, for example, uh, um, Sean Bassett in the 240Z, the carbon one, he built that car because he wanted to compete in Pikes Peak and he petitioned to enter. And they said to him, you legitimately just have no, not enough racing experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're like, you have to do this, 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 and that. Hill climbs or were they, did they make him do? No, they made him courses. do like time attack. Okay. They made him do. Is it like an HPD school I don't know. kind of thing? No, no, no. They they just want to see at least you try to to do these series and you can com commit yourself to do this um, nationwide series and you put in the money and you also they basically just want you to represent the mountain. They, they want you to represent the race because it's such a historic race and it's such an important race. They want you to do your best and 
show it in its best light, you know? So mm-hmm. they don't let anybody in. They just let the people that they know that will at least finish or have a good chance of finishing or have a good chance to have a good story. Right. All so of there's that. a vetting they process. All, yeah. They take it's... all that into consideration. Unlike score where you just show up with your really expensive track truck. And that's just why like... sometimes, people, <laughs> sometimes people crash the first corner, you know, yeah. that happens all the time. Wasn't that oh, the, that's the throwaway line in, in dust to glory is they've even raced a Winnebago. Oh, really? Like at the beginning of Dust of Glory, when Dana Brown's really? doing his narrative voiceover, mm-hmm. he talks about they've yeah. even uh, Winnebago has raced before. Yeah. 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 Who knows if it finished? But mm, I'm sure he didn't finish. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, that that that's. I, I'm surprised you guys didn't realize that. But I, now you guys know. Well, it, it's funny is that we've we've talked to a number of people from from who used to be employed at Jackson Motorsport, which is BFG. And no one ever really commented on that before that just anybody could show up and race. It, it's... And the... Go ahead, Larry. Go, go ahead. Nope, all you. Well, you know, it's interesting. There's um, only a few teams, maybe five or so teams actually, that, that do it and earn a living from off-road racing or at least the trophy truck side. Um, and the cool thing is they dabble in a lot of other things. You know, they do the short course stuff, they do rock crawling, and they also mm-hmm. do um, desert racing. But desert racing in itself, there's only, like I said, really five big teams that actually make money. Um, the rest of the teams just <laughs> use their own money and their own um, funds to to fund this hobby that they have, right? For example, like... Um, Terrible Herbs is a really good example. They have a big team, but they have, honestly, I think the biggest gas station chain in Nevada. And then they take a lot of that money to fund this. And you know, the cool, crazy thing about trophy truck racing is um, you, you've you seen like the Coors truck, you've seen like the Four Loco truck, those, mm-hmm. you know, it's like a big drink brand or whatever. A lot of those trucks, including the Coors truck, Porsche, 100% sure, they do not get a cent from course. You know, they, it's they, a, a they, it's some, yeah, it's get some, attention or something. Yeah. There's that. And sometimes it could be like, Hey, this guy maybe is, I don't know. He's a distributor or whatever. You know, gotcha. there's just certain things that it's so many, so much money is in it. You know, it just mm-hmm. costs so much to do these a lot of these people just earn money elsewhere and they put it into the to this thing that they love yeah it's crazy crazy. so the this race um like for example the ones the photos that you're looking through right now i followed in a helicopter and legitimately at any given moment there's 25 helicopters following the race and it is seriously like one of those scenes out of a uh apocalypse now you know it's just like (laughs) so crazy it's something that just doesn't exist i feel like anywhere else i look below me i look above me i look to the left and right and it's helicopters and we're and they're all talking to each other they're like hey i'm gonna go this way or i'm following this truck hey i'm going backwards on course watch out for me and then it's like they're all talking to each other i could hear all the traffic and then and, and then they're like it's just like such a crazy thing that happens where they also try to get in the picture they also try to get into the footage you know we're one of the few filming uh helicopters so we you know we have priority but then the the people that are spotting for them uh for the racers yeah they're spotters yeah so like for example this 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 is a good example so that's um that guy was leading the 1000 in, in a motorcycle. Right. And that this is sun sunset and he's coming on the Pacific coast side and he's going to finish whatever in two hours. And then, so this other helicopter is like, all right, I'm just going to get in the photo and then I'm just blasting away. <laughs> this, that's like, the. so anyway, I, as I started blasting and I'm just like taking pictures from, from uh, the helicopter shooting another helicopter, it's the craziest thing. It's, 
the the my buddy who's a pilot he just looked over at me the first time i ever rode with him and we were all along the coast and we were flying beneath the trucks because they're on a cliff side mm -hmm. and then we're we're at a lower elevation than the trucks <laughs> and i look over and i see the trucks and then i look to my right it's just a bunch of helicopters and stuff and he looks over at me he's like you think this is a rich person sport or what? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, this oh, was in 2016. Yeah. <sighs> he looked at me and I was just so blown away. I was like, I cannot believe how many you go to the, um, you go to the Ensenada airport. There's so many helicopters. They have, they can't even park them on the runway. They have to park them just in the dirt. Are they just uh, off the just, side? What? Yeah, they're just, it's just they're <laughs> spilling over. It's so many helicopters. And on top of that, um, the craziest thing is I love telling this story. We can land. I mean, maybe we're not allowed to, but legitimately, we land anywhere we want. In the middle of the street, middle of the field. When we need to take, go to the bathroom, we're like, oh, that looks like a good place. And we just land there. We land in someone's farm. We, we oh land for God. lunch. It doesn't matter. <laughs> o open lot, somebody's yard. It doesn't matter. Wherever we want to land, we just land. It's the craziest thing. I mean, that uh, matches up perfectly with the anybody who wants come on down type mentality. Exactly. Exactly. Um, legitimately, we uh, we needed to change the card on the front. There's a there's that uh, camera, the shot over camera in the front of the nose. You you can't change it uh, automatically. You have to manually change it. So we we'll, we would just land in somebody's farm on their fields and then the, the, they're like what the heck is this like this car <laughs> landed in my yard what are you doing and then we're just like all right see you guys later <laughs> and then they hear the engine and somebody flies by at 120 miles per hour. all right yeah. race yep tuesday yeah. how uh how big of a card do you put in in the camera on the front of the helicopter um i think they do like like a terabyte yeah so that's this is oh, this is the scene okay so that's <laughs> my buddy's helicopter right and this is our uh the, our friend's place that's completely off the grid you know self-sustaining well water um so great you know, solar panels all of that on the water it's right it's, it's right along the race course the race course is legitimately to the left of this house okay so uh uh, and the story that I tell, um, there's a Hoonigan video on this, but you see where the Raptor is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm staying in that building. Like I sleep in that building nice. and then the race course is the wall next to my, where, where I'm sleeping. So all night after we're done chasing, you know, after we, we settle down for the night, I try to go to sleep, but it's race cars just passing, just passing by. by all night. <laughs> Yeah, all night. And so you, you can, can see my, you can see my FJ parked right in front mm -hmm. of the helicopter. Um, That's but wild. we're we're actually not allowed to fly at night uh, in Mexico. I think it might be a drug running thing. I don't actually know, but they don't allow it. So. Uh, that's why as soon as the sun dips, we land and then we just call it a night. And then sometimes in the morning, what we'll do is we'll keep chasing um, and just to get the stragglers. But it's just the, the craziest race. And it's so cool that that kind of racing exists. Yeah. So this is a, a perfect example of we're either flying at the same level or under them on this hill side. This is the beach. Like we're over the ocean and I'm shooting into land. Do you match their pace, the helicopter and the truck? Yes. Yes. And there's often times where they're faster than us by a lot. <laughs> by a lot. So the... Yeah, the helicopter, especially when we're full of fuel, we can go about 100 to 115 miles an hour. These guys, when they go on the lake bed, they top out at over 150. Jesus, that's yeah. wild. So that is we legitimately, crazy. full stick ahead, we legitimately, there's some moments where we're like, all right, see you later. And they're just going away. They're just so the, going away. The gone mm -hmm. in 60 seconds, the the i'm trying to think of other movies where they always have helicopter pursuit and all of a sudden they hit the button and they just blast away that's real yeah. it is real but yeah, as soon as they come to a turn you know then you catch up again <laughs> yeah, but, but for for the shot's sake for the photo or for the video legitimately they just go away and you just mm -hmm. can't you can't get them you know you can't you have to like get a running start and as they're accelerating 
you can shoot them. But once they are on the lake bed and they're gone, I mean, like, look how fast this BJ is going here. <laughs> Little, legitimately full speed, like full every, tilt. Everything's blurred but him. <laughs> like, yeah. How yeah. far is it between him and the vehicle in front of him? Because I've been in off-road situations where the dust is like, you can't see so, through it. You have to wait back and, you know, hope for um, the best. I can't tell if that's 500 yards or a mile. <laughs> Well, th- that's why you have to qualify well. If you qualify well, you start at the more in, in the beginning of the pack, and then that allows you to drive without dust. Um, but like, for example, that picture, it's pretty scary at that point because uh, when we're following them at that elevation, they can actually kick up rocks. And I actually have heard rocks what? hit the windshield of the helicopter while we're following them. What? Legitimately. Oh, hot- I mean... Go ahead. Yeah, like 50 feet, 100 feet. Yeah, sometimes we're, sometimes I can, I mean, most of the time I can hear the motor pretty clearly. Um, but sometimes I can read the mile per hour on their uh, Lawrence <laughs> navigation screen. That's how close we're flying. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's the craziest thing. I mean, the co driver is just sitting there holding on for dear life. You know, those screens are pretty big in the trophy trucks, especially, but it'll say whatever mile an hour on there. Have you ever like, thought about trying to get a seat? <laughs> uh, you mean to, to drive? To drive or to ride shotgun? So that, that's a really good question. And that's kind of why I was talking to um, Jerry Zayden about this. And uh, I think he's had that come up pretty often in his career. Uh, where he's had to have other people in his truck or um, they just get like a crack team of people just to get them in, just to drive certain legs of the actual race. Uh, one of the earliest times I actually worked with him and Toyota was when Jay Leno raced them in 400. Okay. And I didn't know. Did I that. actually, yeah. So he <laughs> raced them in 400 in a, in essentially a stock Tacoma and we actually chased him. And we actually were able we were able to get as many photos of the actual um, attempt. Or they, they, I mean, they won, but they were only competing against a couple other people in class. Um, but it is essentially is like the stock truck class, right, right? So it's very possible. It is very possible. It happens all the time. And uh, he did mention, wouldn't it be cool to? have some journalists including myself drive the race at, at least a one portion of it yeah there you go man you guys are fast uh, dude i'm uh, someday when i grow up i want to be zach clapin <laughs> you guys are so fast i'm trying that's man. all chris that's all chris <laughs> my hands are How is it that you're able to find you know the funny thing is i'm getting to a point where i've shot so many photos it's really hard now to remember certain photos and my guys always make fun of me about it because they're still way sharper than I am. Like they, they haven't been ruined, I guess. But um, <laughs> I, I always say like, oh yeah, this event was just whatever. They're, they're like, no, Larry, you, you, you mix two events together or something or like, I don't know. They all blend together. You're, you're, but, um, you're giving no, me good cool. dates. Cool. You're giving me good dates. <laughs> good, good. Awesome. So yeah. So, so that is a very possible thing. And uh um jerry did say potentially later down the line they could have some kind of journalist thing where i could jump in and i would love that you know the point is that most of these people uh who are driving these races they're not actually racers they're They're not actually for a seat well no they just like off-road racing you know they potentially are not actually good traditional racing drivers Mm -hmm. and that's why just to give you an example, King of the Hammers, my really good friend, Von Gidden Jr., you know, he's the professional drifter. As soon as he jumped into one of those trucks, he's top 10 finisher. Right, right. Yeah. You know, first race he ever did, I think he finished seventh. And then just just um, last King of the Hammers, he finished the best he's ever finished. I think he finished fifth overall. And this is out of the field of whatever, how many, 200, 250 people, um, that have been doing rock crawling racing their entire lives or the, mm-hmm. their their entire racing career right and then there's this slippy slidey racer 
named Von Gibb Jr. that just comes in and just wrecks house because guess what? He is not a traditional racing driver, but he comes from a racing background and he understands car control. He understands car, controls, car control. Yeah. yeah. Just he understands driving at a professional level. Most of these people, that's not what they do. You know, what they do is they have their nine to five job and then they come in to, on the weekends and then mm -hmm. they get to race these cars, which is super cool. But then with that said, a lot of times, all, honestly, these guys just don't push it. They really don't drive as fast as they can, as the vehicles can. Right. Yeah. I was slow on Vaughn's. That's pictures. Vaughn. That, that <laughs> looks like that looks like Nurburgring, but it could yep, also it is could also yeah, be it's, Lime Rock. It's, just saying. No, turn it's four. Nurburgring. <laughs> That's definitely Nurburgring. Comparing Lime Rock to the Nurburgring is like the worst <laughs> ever. Um, but one of the ran, shortest and one of the longest. Seriously, but uh, random thought on this whole mm -hmm. subject: you guys should make instead of the drift taxi, you should make like the Baja taxi. And do some crazy that long travel cool. four seater. That would be cool. I think, I mean, uh, that definitely exists. The luxury pre runners, um, for <laughs> example, VJ. Luxury yeah. pre runners. Yeah, um, BJ has that one. It's um, it's called Loki, and it has AC, and it's like super nice inside. It's very really comfortable, but it has forty two inch tires. It has oh, crazy suspension. It's all of Bronco that. based, right? Or no, is it Blazer? Uh, Blazer. Base. Blazer. There's Blazer. nothing left. That's, there's legitimately nothing the left. Badges, that's Blazer. Like yeah. Badges, yeah. Yeah. So those trucks. Yeah. That one right there. Oh, that bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a luxury pre-runner. You know, I. It, it's it, those are so cool. And it, it allows you to kind of give the experience to other people. Mm -hmm. It's. Yeah. He gets so much air with it. Seriously. Yeah. But that's, it is that's so cool. the bringing the experience to other people is really what you guys have exceeded in. And mm -hmm. I mean, off road racing for the people in the off road world was always, you know, it was the fast equivalent of what people in the autocross world looked up to in Formula One. And I mean, especially over the last like 15 years, it's, it's really. I stay, I think it's coming to its own because the accessibility is in a place where it's never been, you know, you, you, yeah. you follow along, like you've never been able to before. You guys will definitely get a full taste of it when you do come out to King of the Hammers, because as you guys know, it's not just about rock racing now, you know, uh, it's about <laughs> trophy trucks. It's about mm -hmm. um, motorcycles. It's about um, stock vehicles. It's about, just anything and everything to do with off-road in one place and most of the people i'd say 90 percent of the people that go to that race don't actually see the race they don't actually they're just there to get drunk and have fun <laughs> and party and in the desert road exactly they they, they just want to camp out oh, somebody called it friends off-road burning man it and is I still that is. comes back to my mind was that it is did levi burning. call it that it, yeah, I think probably. Maybe. I mean, probably. We had Levi Shirley on, so. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, I think it is that, you know, and it's, it's really, I'm so grateful that it exists. I'm so grateful that the organization uh, really allows us to use their event as, as a um, vessel to, to capture all of this content. You know, anytime we step on the lake bed, we, we really don't have that much of an agenda, but it just so many things present itself. Um, did you guys see that Mercedes that I featured recently? No. That I found $800 Mercedes. That was, oh, it's I a did. diesel. Hold on, yeah. I'm getting there. I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. $800 diesel Mercedes that we saw on the lake bed. And this thing legitimately blew up. I think on that one post that I did, the initial post on my um, uh, Instagram, I just shot a couple cell phone pictures. <laughs> yeah. And it, it has, uh, look at how many likes it has, but it, it has a- uh, Holy crap, it's got 52,000. The Mad Max aesthetic still works. Yeah, It'll yeah, never yeah. go out so of style. Cut this vendors. thing was, a, this, this is what I mean. Like 
it doesn't need to be an expensive build mm -hmm. for it to be interesting. You know, you just have to have a good story and just a good time, I guess. Whoa, wait, go back. What was happening with that stack? This stack? Yeah, it's just a diesel Mercedes. Oh, turbo yeah, diesel. <laughs> oh boy. It's like the antithesis of Glucker's car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just so cool. I just, That's I funny. love stuff like this. You know, I love telling the story about this. And this, the guy was just there just to drive around in his diesel Mercedes and just uh, look at this sticker. Look, go yep. back and look at the sticker. Look how cool that is. It says, um, for more driving than 100 miles per hour, plus six PSI. Plus six. Look at that. <laughs> six PSI. Just add I guess six Autobahn. PSI that's that's yeah, Autobahn. Autobahn. Life. Yeah, that's Autobahn for sure. That's so funny. Dude, but anyways, so um, yeah, the, 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 it just the perfect venue, perfect place for everything, anyone to be included. So then what are you, I mean, you've covered it all. What are your aspirations? What haven't you shot? What haven't you been to oh, that you, that's still on the list? Without a doubt, Dakar is the next big Dakar? one that I need to okay. go. Yeah. The only that's problem Mecca. is... That's Mecca. Yeah, the only problem literally is... Now. <laughs> yes, literally now. Yeah. Because it's Saudi Arabia. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. That was well good. Well <laughs> done. That was a good dad joke. Turns out I read a map. <laughs> yeah. I... I um uh, I do want to do it, but I know it's going to be tough to do, and it's definitely pricey. Um, if 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 I was going to pay for it, so I have to latch on to a good team. I have to get a lot of good content out of it. But yeah, that's one of the last ones that I want to do. I mean, I've I just there's so many other things that I want to shoot, but in terms of like big name stuff, that's mm -hmm. a big one. That's yeah. That's how, premieres, premier yeah. gets. How long yeah. is the contract with Saudi Arabia? Is that a, a forever kind of thing? I don't know. I think everything with that race is subject to change. Okay. Yeah. Subject to, you know, safety really. Right. Wars. Safety. Yeah. Yeah. People in the mountains waiting to you know hijack. Yeah. Um, what is that? Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> Tuscan Raiders. Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going line, for. Ross. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's one that I want to do. Um, it just looks so cool, and I know it's going to be tough to to follow, but mm -hmm. um, it'll be worth it. That's well, a good like, one. Yeah. The the spread of that race, it like the start and finish are super close but then like the stages themselves are like thousands of miles long it's it's almost harder to chase that yeah yeah you almost have to do it from a helicopter unfortunately you'll have, you'll just have to get back in a helicopter <laughs> first of all you got to ship it to saudi arabia <laughs> or or charter one there which is probably the better bet that's that's you probably the easier way to go about it. Helicopters, yeah. probably need a, cheaper a than it is to charter them here. You need a rich patron, or you need a Saudi prince who also wants to watch the race from the air. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a that, that's a different world. I can't imagine. So, Larry, if we were to wrap this up, do you have any Baja advice for people going to their first Baja? Mm, that's, a, that's a good one. So, um, the one, one really good piece of advice, if you're going to go and you, if you're going to stay in Ensenada, there's so many nice Airbnbs or um, like just rental properties. It, you, you may not have to go off of Airbnb, but it's just so much new development down there mm -hmm. that there's just very nice modern houses right along the beach that are very well priced, even during the race. And um, that's the best place in terms of staying, you know, forget any of the hotels, just stay at a rental property. And then uh, you may not have to go to like the main viewing areas. Like there's just 
power line roads, big whoops, big jumps. You know, you, you can find your own place. You can find like a water crossing or something that nobody even goes to. You just have to look at the map and just make a own, your own race out of it. You know, pre-plan, make sure you have a lot of fuel. It's not like you have to pay to get in. You know, it's just something where you just pay your way to get down to Mexico and then you just have a good time. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. that's, that's pretty much it. Realistically, um, you know, once the world is uh, back to normal, they'll have the tech and contingency again, where all the trucks go through town and then, you know, there's all the vendors and there's all fanfare and all of that. That's always fun to check out. There's a lot of culture there. If you're into photography, that's the best time to really get the feeling of Baja um, because of the vendors, the food, the activities, all of that. But if you just want to go for the race, you don't. You can skip all of that and just go for that main race day uh, going into the next day. So typically, mm-hmm. the race starts in the afternoon for the cars, for the trophy trucks. The motorcycles start way earlier. But if you want to watch the trophy trucks, you you sleep in that day, you know, you find your spot. And then around 4 or 5 p.m. is when all the trophy trucks come by. Hmm. You know, once it gets dark, you go back, whatever, chill. And then the next morning, you go back out to a spot and then watch the people come finish. It's it's the coolest. It's That's such cool. a good time. Yeah. That's super great. Yeah. The the Also, like the locals are so friendly and they're just so appreciative that people are down there. And they're just so they love racing so much. They just love the culture and they love that it doesn't really exist anywhere else in the world, except for this little peninsula. It's the coolest thing. Yeah. How long is the drive for you? For me, it's about four hours. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So it takes about two hours to get to San Diego, just to the border. Mm -hmm. And then from then, you know, it's as soon as hours. I cross into Tijuana, it's two hours. Yeah. To get in. to Ensenada. <laughs> That's really not bad. No. Yeah. I, no, not I, at all. Traffic in the Northeast is, uh, but yeah, it's, it's cool. And it's just, it's crazy that I always say this and my guys hate me for saying this every single time. But as soon as we drive into Mexico, we cross the border. I just, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, Man, this it's so crazy that it's essentially the same land, but we're in a different really. country. Yeah. yeah. Same it, thing. It's, I mean, I can as soon as we cross over, I look over, I can still see San Diego. You know, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm in Tijuana and it's just a completely different country with different laws and all of that. It's a completely different feel, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's great. The we've been down there so much for filming and for chasing um, off-road racing. Uh, And uh, like one of the, one of the really nice projects that I had a chance to be a part of was uh, recoil Two. Yeah. uh, With with BJ, when he absolutely shredded the town uh, of Ensenada. Yeah. That was a lot. It was the first one was fucking mind blowing. Yeah, all it, it was just so cool. <laughs> yeah, They're all cool. But that one was just especially cool because just a, a, they, they gave us the key to the city. You know, we could do anything. Mm-hmm. And and he was just driving like a madman all over. It was the coolest thing. Just yeah. driving. Like, look at those Good people God. just hanging out. I mean, that doesn't happen in, you couldn't do this in the U.S. Oh you know, look, look at all those people. <laughs> Travis Pastrana tried to do something in a similar vein in Baltimore. Oh, so this, thereabouts, this, uh, but... yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I was on that one too. Yep. But, uh, but uh, this, look at those people standing on the roofs. We legitimately had worried that he was going to run into the power lines the here. Power lines? For the, yeah, for this shot. What so, about damper on things? <laughs> You don't you don't actually get a sense from that picture. I do have a shot from the side, but he essentially jumped two streets. Oh my god. That that one trick, he jumped two streets. So he like jumped he cleared here, you could see that that like how steep it was mm-hmm. if you go up. I saw there was a picture of somebody walking. So this is yeah, the yeah, reverse. Yeah, that, oh my reverse god. 
Yeah, that's the reverse of it. I mean, it was so insane. You could barely walk down it. Was there a lot of planning for that, or was it kind of like, just go for it? There was. I mean, typically with these sort of shoots, uh, there's so many scout days and there's so much planning because you mm-hmm. just don't – you want to be able to use your time efficiently. You know, the, the set, it's a 100-man crew on these. Oh. You know, there's just so much going on. Um, it's like a big deal, you know. So w- w- they try to do it as efficiently as possible. And uh, sometimes it just doesn't go – exactly the way it's planned but they always make the most of it it's it's the most hilarious thing especially with this one because of how many people were just so interested in what we were doing you know in when we're shooting in the states it's easy to lock everything down and just get rid of everybody but when you're shooting in mexico it's like the, the crowd is the fun part that's the interesting part to me that's interesting to the fact that they're part of the the show you know yeah so it's 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 super cool this is one of the my really one of the most favorite my favorite shoots to be on it was it was so cool it's like it's not reckless because we know everything is is somewhat calculated and like there has to be an insurance binder on things but it comes off as as being that way and that adds to the mayhem like that picture is fucking crazy if you showed that picture to anybody in the states without the context of it yeah uh do you remember when that guy actually had that crazy (laughs) beetle and was like just ripping around california and that beetle jumping streets yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. like that's what you would think is happening yeah i I just shot with him just oh really (laughs) (laughs) that's why i thought i'd seen him in other hoonigans (laughs) he was doing wheelies for us yeah oh man yeah he's super funny that's so cool but i felt like that video came out after recoils like Yes. It, oh it yeah. It, yeah. It seemed he, like he it was in inspired by that. Yeah. He yeah, was he got in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he did. But you know what? He uh he's racing a lot now. And um he actually won the Beetle race at King of the Hammers. Nice. And, yeah, and I think the purse was like twenty grand or something cr- something crazy so, dude, for winning a, a, a <laughs> way more than that. <laughs> so what no, the no, suspension no, 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 no. and tires cost on his vehicle. Stock beetle racing. Stock, Stock beetle. beetle. Oh, yes. oh, we were talking to somebody about that. What class is that? It it has some crazy uh, spec. Class hundreds. eleven and Bob. Class eleven and Bob. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Class eleven. Yeah. Yeah. But they're yeah, they're yeah. like slower than class eleven. Really? Oh my God. Yeah. Well, type in King of the Hammers beetle race. Mm-hmm. I think none of this is slower. helping my desire for like a Subaru powered Baja, like yeah. a, a Baja bug, scumbug. Pretty much. Um. So I yeah the the BJ Baldwin stuff is really just taking the form of like the off road psychotic Jim Connor, and I think I've gotten more of a reaction from people out of those than the Jim Connors in all honesty, in just like yeah. total disbelief. Well, I mean honestly, both just have their place. Both are crazy, you know, in terms of car control. Um, I have to hand it to BJ. He knows every inch of the trucks that he drives. Like he he can parallel park those things really down to an inch. And just the way he can manipulate the suspension, right? Like when he goes over an edge, he always like, you know, squats it and gets Great it to guess, pop. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the car control that he has. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stock oh this is a camber racing video so it checks out yeah <laughs> but yeah oh that, my anyways, God. i shared funny this is that? through facebook months ago and i was like wait i know where it is <laughs> that's so funny but but something that looks like that they just keeps comfortable race yeah they keep the world's <laughs> least comfortable race is what he said that's what I you're said, basically yeah. dragging the chassis everywhere <laughs> you're just dragging it so, suddenly a whole new market for skid plates has, has developed <laughs> well, they don't really oh, need him because no. the engine's in the back what's under the bottom fair. of a bug that's nothing. fair not, no, good, point. Nothing good, good point good point i'll show you a video that we your shot. ass that's what is <laughs> just uh, like like pillows underneath let me see if i can find a video <laughs> that we shot from the exact race oh my god you guys that's are hysterical, gonna laugh. Man. it's just so silly 
Let's see if I can find it. Sorry, sorry for the lull. And no, action. you're good. Hey, you're good. I, I also that had would, to make sure I, I had checked <laughs> off that all participants could share. <laughs> that would be the cheapest race for us to enter, Chris. But you and I could not share Found anything re- remotely resembling the same seat. So no, I'm so much for that. Six four and you're five <laughs> ten. I have check, no. check out that video. <laughs> this is the video that my uh, video guy shot, and this is the actual race. You got to watch this thing. It's hilarious. This was the actual race that Blake won. It's I like so how they're good. stickered and yeah. liveried like full foot, like normal it's race so cars. Good. Look at it. Look at them. Look at the Falcon Tire logo. Like it looks like every drift car. Look at it. Look at it. So good. <laughs> they have like the full, like glamis whip like, flags. They had like 20 laps that they had to do around the short course. Okay. And they're like jumping over the big jump. Oh my. But they're not really jumping, I guess. They're more like, just they just drive over, over them. That, that yeah that's the big jump that, oh no that that's air, air. Yeah. that's that's jump. pretty good so, yeah so so anyways this is the race that like won that guy's fucking flying like <laughs> he's hauling <laughs> in a, that was a better bounce than i thought it was gonna be like that actually had some cushion to it how mm. funny is that the guy in the oh, car is not saying the same thing yeah yeah see it is class 11 that's but yeah, e m m p e m p i class emp 11, 11, showdown. 11 showdown yeah 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 that's what the race Dude, was it looks like so much fun yeah it's like spec me actually if, if you go to slower. blake's if you go to blake's instagram there's a picture of his it has the same livery too it's really? so good it's what's, so good what's blake's last name it's so funny wilkie it's blake oh, wilkie yeah, 357 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now i as soon as you said the last name i remembered it Dude, oh, it's so good. Oh, show up at Baja. Oh, in a, there's a, in a beetle. There's a, there's a video of his uh, in his livery in the livery. <laughs> oh, 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 it's oh, so good. No, 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 a, no, 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 no. Above, above it. Okay, the video I just exactly the amount of air. <laughs> oh my god! Like, the, the video exactly above it is yeah. from the actual race. I can feel that in my spine. Oh, oh it's so good. But I don't get why would you even need a spotter, or why would you need a co-driver for weight look at that. distribution? Look at that. Uh, so you can share the agony with somebody when you take yeah. impacts. So someone else is also slightly shorter when the race is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, that's so that's fucking terrible. The fact that they did it at night too, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, look at it. It's in the livery and everything. It's yeah, it's great. Thing. I love the red wheels, like oh flags God. flying. Look, Look at it's the- so good. <laughs> is it like real, like full wheel to wheel? Like people are making yeah. contact. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just like a, a like a land rush start and everything. Yeah. It is. Full oh on. my God. I just need richer friends. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we. I don't yeah. know. I don't think you need that much money to race that. No, That's it's like, fun. it's like a slightly more expensive twenty four hours of lemons. Yeah, exactly. Just you also donate part of your spine. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to donate more of my spine. I've already done it, so we're fine. <laughs> mine, mine hurts enough. <laughs> he's got a ton of builds. It seems like he's yeah, got... Yeah, nice. There's like a build every five five pictures. It's a different oh, build. That, you guys should ask him to be on the podcast. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the done. same thing. I'll send a message. Yeah. <laughs> I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Be like, hey, Larry said you should go, go be on the podcast. Right. <laughs> I just named. No, him. seriously, he's seriously. going on the list. <laughs> no, he's he's awesome. I, I like working with him. So That's... is that what you would race if you had your uh, your easy and an easy choice? Would you jump right into a beetle just for shits to start? No, I feel like it would be too scary for me for somebody to pass me at a hundred and twenty five mile per hour difference in speed. You know. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Wait, yeah, those fair. things are on there the course go. with the trophy trucks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We yes. just get blitzed by somebody and you can't. Which you, it, the... it'll, if they pass yeah. you, they'll just turn you around. So you can take the way. Yeah. Um, you see the next no, one coming I, at you. I'd rather drive something that's like a little faster, that has a little more armor. What about those? Uh, oh, we we talked about them with Lynn um, and with Glucker, the Subaru powered ones. Open, open, wide open, Baja. Oh, yeah. wide open Baja. 
Oh yeah, those things are crazy. Those things are fast. That yeah. sounds like a yeah, good I mean, place for you to start. A cage and quick. If Jeff could get air. <laughs> <laughs> Say that. I'm pretty sure he ruined a GoPro getting air doing that. He landed on the <laughs> GoPro. Sweet. Larry, do you want oh, to promote yeah. anything? I mean, you just dropped, um, you're building a Tundra and no one else knows about yeah. it, I guess. <laughs> like, that's pretty big. Well, I, I like to, you know, I, I try my best to get on as many podcasts as possible because um, um, it's just right now there's so much media. Um, but the thing is, that's kind of how people follow me. You know, they, they look at my Instagram, they see the podcast that I go on, um, they you know, watch my videos on, on the Hoonigan Autofocus channel. I, I try to give as much info as possible, as many places as possible, just because, um, you know, it's, hopefully we can inspire other people to get into off-road builds, on-road builds. Um, but um, if you want to support us directly, I'm selling uh, high quality art prints right now. Just go to LarryChenPrints.com. And I print all of them on the printer right behind me right there. And uh, yeah, I sign each one. And it's kind of like a passion project for me. You know, it's a lot of fun for me. I work with Canon, as you guys probably know, but I also work with Canon on the printing side and mm -hmm. they support me on the print printing side. So I actually have a professional large format printer um, in-house here. And uh, yeah, I print all of these. Sometimes I do some special edition ones where I get Ken um, Block to come in and sign 50 or more. Uh, and sometimes I get, uh, you know, just star guests to, to sign them. But like I, I gave this one away recently and I couldn't believe how many people uh, entered in, into this contest. It was crazy. It's fairly epic photo. <laughs> it's like the iconic Pikes Peak photo other than the yeah. Evo going off. <laughs> well, I think, well, I mean, it was the same location, right? But this print is uh, six feet long, 72 oh, inches shit. by 24. So it's it's like a good piece for your man cave or your living room or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that just has a lot of presence. And I sign all of them and I print them on the highest quality canon paper i need mm -hmm. i need my kids to get a little older before i make that kind of investment right it's something that like as they trash the basement i'm going to be pissed that that <laughs> yeah, the, the kind of pool ball going through <laughs> that it's not what you need the, the, no no that would we only really put dodgeballs down there so okay. oh great but no you guys larry squishy ones the squishy yeah the ones that hit your face and deform your face no, no, <laughs> um, not those oh not those okay but you guys have also done some good like charitable charitable collaborations too i remember when you and oh, yeah. and, and matt did the one after the fires so yep, yep, yeah people yep. should keep in tune for that stuff too oh yeah yeah so um and um i've been doing some charitable stuff with uh with leno also he's such an amazing person to work with he's a very big supporter and that like he just is like a one-man show when it comes to promoting car culture you know, so um, all the stuff that I do with him, uh, for example, when I teach classes at his place, you know, that goes to his foundation. And it's um, it's really awesome to, to be able to work with all these people. Dude, that's great. Mm -hmm. So when you say teach classes, photo classes? Yeah. So I haven't taught a class in a while, you know, since since over a year now. <laughs> um, but hopefully it'll happen sooner than later. I mean. So much of it is just uh, helping Canon sell cameras and promote photography in general and keep keeping this thing alive, but also really just promoting the fact that you can enjoy car culture this other way, which is right. taking pictures of cars and racing and that all that stuff, you know, because it's one thing to be able to drive them, race them, all that, whatever. Not everybody you know, has enough money to go racing and enjoy cars that way. But anybody can pick up a camera or a cell phone and then photograph them, you know? True. Yeah, it's, it's the new accessible. It is. And I love it. It's it's the best. And I, I definitely attribute a lot of my success to that fact. The fact that I can inspire people to, to uh, take pictures. You take good ones. It helps. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. True, true. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, man. Cool. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, Larry, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Fantastic it's been to meet you. Fun. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hopefully, we get to uh, do some off roading sometime in the future. Yes, please. Sounds good. Yeah. Reach Toyota off road meetup. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. We, that's been a running joke for us for a number of years now with Hooniverse. Oh, that God. Glucker's got his Montero in California. I'm in Kansas City. Ro uh, Ross is in Connecticut. We got another guy in Wisconsin. Camille's in Boston. Like, we, we just need to all go off roading somewhere. Camille also has a forerunner. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be fun. And that that's kind of the thing is it's, it's so much more access accessible than people think. You know, you could just. That's the nice thing about these vocals. You can just pick up and go and just go whatever, drive however many thousands of miles. So I bought my Tundra from New York and I Good was boy. telling, yeah, I was telling the guys at Copart, I was like, yeah, I just, I won the car. I won the auction. Just let me drive it from New York to LA. They're like, yeah, it doesn't really work like that. It's uninsured. Registration, it's uninsured. Yeah. Registration, yeah. all of that. I'm like, dang, you guys, ugh. That would have been so cool. Yeah. But uh, well, with that's that content. said, like, what? Yeah, yeah. I, that yeah. would have been really good content. But with that said, um, the that underwriter mean, said otherwise. Yeah, that that doesn't mean that you know now that it's all registered and insured and all those you know things, um, I can't do anything like that. <laughs> Should? Yeah. Should? I will. Sweet. Uh, cool. You can rate and review the show on iTunes. We still have good ratings, which is amazing to me. Uh, for the audio listener, if you wanna, if you wanna click on the YouTube video, you get to see a lot of great pictures. So the YouTube version is probably the episode to watch for this one. For this one, um, absolutely. Because Larry was nice and let me uh, use all of his websites for visuals. So. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. We've been writing things. I wrote things. You wrote things. I haven't I wrote written things. shit. Uh, I wrote a sad thing last week because I posted all of my favorite Sabine Schmidt's videos. Oh, yeah, that yeah, cancer sucks. Fuck yep. cancer. Fuck uh, cancer. Yeah, you can follow Ross. No, not like the one from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad. I think I have a camping trip coming up. The Colorado yes. trip doesn't count. We stayed in a very nice house. <laughs> glamping, not even glamping, just like vacation. No, we just we we did what we were doing here, just. 10 hours west of us in a winter snowstorm <laughs> uh you follow the show off the road again podcast on instagram that's it yeah. we're done we made it that's it <laughs> larry larry's still talking to us which is a good sign. yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, that is, uh, no really thanks thanks for having me really um my the best part of this job honestly is just being able to meet so many people from all over the world and any city that I go to, I'm able to connect with these people um, from all walks of life. And it's honestly the best. Well, thanks, man. It's great having you on. Yeah. Pleasure. Cool. Thank you, guys. All right, man.